Well, here we go. Here's video number one of three incoming for NVIDIA. Plus, there's more coming from AMD uh, for launches this month. It's going to be a busy month. So today, we're going to be starting off with the 4070 Super, adding to the 4070 lineup and sort of replacing the 4070 Ti. So that's going to be kind of interesting. So let's just get right into it. EK Waterblocks Quantum Torque fittings for PC liquid cooling include static extenders, rotary adapters, offsets, double rotary fittings, and micro series for all small form factor systems. With a wide variety of fittings, your loop building experience becomes much easier, quicker, and more streamlined. And all torque fittings come in four major finish options that will blend in with any setup. The standard nickel plated versions, the special matte black, satin titanium, and fittings plated with real gold. With replaceable locking rings available in multiple colors and aesthetic color rings only available from EK, the customization options are almost endless. To see the full lineup of EK water block torque fittings, follow the link in the description below. I'm not going to bore you with a whole lot of specs because you can easily just go to Tech Power Up and look at the specs yourself. But on the surface, um, it's just a little more of everything that uh, the 4070 already had regarding the T, uh, T AD104 chip. So 4070, as you know, has a 5888 shading units, uh, 184 TMU, 64 ROPS, 46 SM counts, 184 tensor cores, 46 RT cores, 36 megabyte L2 cache. Um, if we go right up to the 4070 uh, Ti, that has 7680 shading units. So you can see almost 2000 more uh, CUDA cores, 240 TMUs, 80 ROPs, 60 SMs, 240 tensor cores, and 60 RT cores with 48 megabytes versus 36 megabytes of L2 cache. So just a little more of everything. Um, and then in terms of RAM, I forgot to even mention that, we've got 12 gigabytes of RAM on the 4070 Ti, and we have got uh, 12 gigabytes also on the 4070 non-TI. So let's talk about the 4070 Super. As you would imagine, spec-wise, it slots right in the middle. So we've got 7,168 CUDA cores, 224 TMUs, 80 ROPs, uh, 224 tensor cores, and 56 RT cores, and 48 megabytes of uh, L2 cache. So it's actually closer spec-wise to the 40. 70 Ti, which technically it's replacing than the 47 than it is to the 4070. So it's a bigger gap there in terms of the lower end to the card that it's replacing, which is a good thing. Um, what I think is kind of fun about this card, though, is the fact that I swear sometimes NVIDIA makes the designs look better on some of their lower end cards. Because what you can see right here is I have the giant 4080 sitting right here, which has this like sort of a pewtery, bronzy, sort of a gunmetal color, if you will. It's definitely a gunmetal with like a little bit of red in it. But the 4070 Super is just like blacked out and it's got this like pol these polished edges on there. And to me, that just looks so much better than, and, and it goes with more builds and stuff than the kind of a pewtery color on the 4080 and 4090 and the old 4070. Actually, the 4070 uh, is silver. So you can see now we got three different colors between <laughs> those three cards. I'm assuming the rest of the 4070 Super lineup and the 4080 Super might be black. I'm not entirely sure. The renders were hard to tell. So with that said, let's just go ahead and get right into the charts right here. So here are the current prices. Now these are going to need big, big asterisks next to them because things are sort of going to be changing a little bit. For instance, the 4080 up here, as you can see, at $1,199. That's the FE price. FE is also MSRP at $1,200. That's going away. The 4080 is going to be no more. If you, if you buy a 4080 right now at $1,200, that's dumb because of the fact that the 4080 Super is coming, which is faster and it's got an MSRP of $999. So it's gonna be cheaper. And if anyone is gonna have these on the shelves next to a 4080 Super for more expensive, then that retailer is dumb and you shouldn't buy from them anyway. But the 1200 bucks really is more like 999. The 4070 Tough, as you can see at a price of 849, the reason why we're using the Tough in this chart and not the 4070 FE is because there wasn't a 4070 Ti FE. Um, that was because that came out right around that whole fiasco of having two 4080 SKUs and then NVIDIA kind of pivoted at the last second and got rid of the 4080 lower, what was it, 12 gigabyte version versus the 16 gigabyte version. So that became the 4070 Ti and all the FEs basically were scrapped. So all we've got are custom AIB cards. That's why it's not MSRP of 999, or excuse me, seven, wow, 799 that the 4070 Ti MSRP is. And that's the only card we have. So that's why it's $50 premium above the MSRP. We have the 3070 Ti in this test because I was just kind of curious as to what sort of the generational improvement is over, I can't do a 3070 Super because there wasn't one. So this is why this lineup is confusing when it comes to like checking generational improvements because of the fact that there was a 2070 Super, there was no 3070 Super, 
but there is a, 30, a 4070 Super and a 4070 Ti. So I just did the 3070 Ti because it's the same MSRP when it launched as the 4070 Super. So that's why I threw that in there. One correction on this chart though, as you can see the 4070 FE shows 599, it's actually 549. This was a launch price and that's why it says up there, launch price. So just kind of take this chart with a grain of salt, but it is $50 cheaper than that. So obviously the 4070 Super slides into the 4070 FE price. Uh, giving it more performance, obviously, at that same price. And then the 4070 FE or 4070 MSRP slides down 50 bucks to 549. I threw the 7800 XT in here for one reason and one reason only. Currently, AMD does not have a GPU slotted in the $600 price point. They've got the $500 price, price point, like the 7800 XT, and then they jump all the way up to like $900 with the 7900 XT. And then of course they have the 7900 XTX, which is like a thousand or it's like 1100 or something like that. The price is, is odd. So there's a huge gap for AMD there. So I threw the 7800 XT in there, but realistically you could probably even shop like 6950 XTs, although that's first gen AMD RT cores, which would have looked terrible on the RT titles. At least the 7800 XT has second gen RT accelerators for AMD. With that said, the very first thing we do is synthetic. So we got our, our Port Royal, which is a synthetic benchmark looking specifically at RT performance. No surprise, the 40 FE, uh, the 4080 FE is at the top. The only reason I'm showing the 4080 FE is because as we move into the 4070 Ti Super Review coming in a week or two, it's gonna be interesting to see how close it gets to that card considering the fact that it's $100 cheaper and that card is being phased out. So I just wanted it in there to see how it sort of compares to it. The 4070 Ti Tough, as you can see, it's like a perfect linear chart if we look at this right here. So the 4070 Super, as you can see, is faster than the FE at 13,012 versus 11,266 and basically that same amount slower than the 4070 Ti. But remember the 4070 Ti is disappearing. Uh, so we know the performance for the same price as what the 4070 Ti is now at 799 is going to slide up here a little bit. So you're gonna be getting more performance for the same amount of money because they added the word super to it. So you can see a nice linear chart right here. So 4070 to the jump to the 4070 uh, Super, pretty significant jump right there. 7800 XT, not doing too bad, but as you can see, if you're still down here like a 3070 Ti range card, um, feels bad. Moving forward here, Time Spy Extreme, this is a non-RT test, so this is just letting all those, um, those CUDA cores and all the stream processors and stuff with AMD just do their thing. 4080 on top again, as you would expect, 4070 Ti tough. Again, a very linear chart. Although the 7800 XT overtakes the 4070 FE here because we're not dealing with that generational difference between second gen RT cores for AMD or RT accelerators and third generation RT cores for Nvidia. Okay, so apparently I forgot to resize the chart on this one. The 4080 FE actually got 247 FPS in 1080p. So pink is 1080, blue is 1440. And then I'm doing 4K for the 4070 Ti because it is capable of exceeding 60 FPS, which isn't in my opinion, the minimum amount of FPS you need for a card to be okay for a resolution. Um, obviously, Elitist will have a much higher number in their head. So as you can see right here, the 4070 Ti Tough, still exceeding 200 FPS in 1080, 145 in 1440, and 78 in 4K. Now this is an AMD bias title. It always has been, it always will be. So that's why you see the 7800 XT, basically like right there, it's one FPS off like across the board. At this range is such margin of error. Um, that's why the 7800 XT is doing so good versus the 4070 Super at so much less expensive, by like 100 bucks MSRP. That is the, that 7800 XT is not a custom card. It's not an AIB, it's not overclocked. It's just out of the box. That guy right there on the front of the table, which is the, uh, the reference version from AMD. But as you can see, the 4070 uh, definitely quite a bit behind, like 20, over 20 FPS behind the Super that is replacing it um, at its current price point. So again, quite a bit more FPS for the same dollar, which is nice to see, but it's still a lot of dollars at 600 bucks. Here's Cyberpunk uh, 2077, no RT. Um, we'll just ignore that 4080. We know the 4080 is gonna be way ahead on everything, but 4070 Ti, 4070 Super, and again, surprisingly, the 7800 XT right there with RT off anyway, RT is a different story. But 143 versus 141 in 1080, 91 versus 92 in 1440, and 39 and 39 in each. Now that we know Cyberpunk is not a very friendly 
um, 4K title. This is also with no frame gen on either of them, no fluid gaming motion, whatever crap they call it on AMD, no DLSS, no nothing. It's This is just raw horsepower of the card, letting those the core architecture do the work. That's why the FPS is so low when you drop down to 4K like that. Moving on to RT and turning it on though, you can see everything gets cut like in half when it comes to like FPS. So you can see now the 4070 Ti is at 80, 1080p, 50, 1440, and then 23. It's almost like a factor of half. 1440 to, to 1080 is not quite, it's more than half, but it's chopped pretty significantly. But as you can see right here, there's only a three FPS gain with RT on and 4K. I mean, that's three FPS is actually a lot for this title with RT on for any graphics card. And this is where you can see the poor 7800 XT is just like, oh my God, we're dying down here. So when we look at Shadow of the Tomb Raider with no RT, it's an old title. Um, we like to test old titles with new cards because we found that sometimes old titles run worse on new hardware because it's so optimized for the now and the future. And because of the engine caps on some of the older titles being so low, that when fast cards hit that, that engine cap hard, it tends to lower the overall FPS and the averages. So we find that sometimes it's worthwhile to test these older titles. That's why Shadow of the Tomb Raider is still on our chart list, but they've lifted the FPS cap actually, which they, they've clearly done some engine changes. We had to go back and retest all of the cards. In fact, all these cards were retested for this because of the fact that we found and the amount of time that's elapsed since the 40 series first launched till now, almost every single title got an uplift in performance across the board on every card. So that means obviously some of these tests like the 4070 Super was like nearly matching a 4090, which was clearly not indicative of real performance because the 4090 would have also gotten an uplift. So we haven't, we had to go back and retest all these cards that you're seeing on the charts right here. So these are today type of tests. So almost 300 FPS now. <laughs> in 1080p, which was not, last time, like, it was like 211 was like the highest we could get in the past. So there, there you go. There's your obvious lift right there. Um, 248 and 1440 and 133. So if we look at the 4070 Tough, you can see it's pretty close to it right there. It is much closer to the 1080p cap than it is the 1440, because again, those are much closer to the, to the engine cap. Um, but even the worst card on here, the 3070 Ti is getting 72 FPS and 4K. 4070 Super, lands smack dab in the middle between the 4070 Ti and the 4070 FE, as you would expect. Um, definitely no surprises there. Ironically, when you turn ray tracing on though, it doesn't hurt too much because uh, Shadow of the Tomb Raider only uses it for shadow ray tracing. Ironically, it's not because of the name, it's just the type. There's different types of ray tracing. There's ambient occlusion, there's shadow, there's reflections, obviously there's lighting, uh, uh, well, it's ambient occlusion, right? So there's global luminosity and all that sort of stuff with ray tracing that can be turned on and certain titles like Cyberpunk can turn them all on. And that's why the FPS tanks like it does. But because shadow is only using shadows, it's not hitting the performance quite as hard. But this is why you see the 7800 way down here at 55 for 4K. 106 and 154 aren't bad. So you can see right here though, it's a it's such a linear chart as you go up. So as you pay more, you get that much more. I guess I shouldn't surprise anybody. That's how money and performance works. Not always for Nvidia though. So that's why it's nice to see that this is a pretty linear chart for if we were to overlay price and performance, they would be pretty, actually now versus the past, you would see the price flatten out before the performance where before you'd see the performance and the price never intersect because that's just the way it was designed to go. Gears of War 5, I honestly don't know why we have this title. We just look for stuff that allows us to test different types of engines. Um, again, a very high engine cap at all the way up at 244 FPS. But again, you can see 206 and 244 for the 4080 means we probably have around a 250 FPS cap in this engine. But again, 14 or um, 4K, you're getting 77 FPS with the 4070 Super. So although they don't really tout the 4070 Super as a 4K gaming card, they really do push it as a high frame rate, high refresh rate, 1440p panel type of card. I think it's important to see that you can spend, you know, 600 bucks and get really good uh, 4K performance if you're not an elitist looking for 120 or higher. Again, 40, 3070 down here, not looking terrible, but one FPS under that magic 60 number. So this number would be like orange red if we were looking at a indicator of performance. So Forza Horizon 5, again, RT was on, very linear chart, um, is exactly as you'd expect it to be. But as you can see, the 7800 XT performs better than it does in some of these other titles because it is a much more AMD optimized title as well. Um, so you can see the 7800 XT actually beating the 4070 FE on all three resolutions and right at on the heels 
of the 4070 Super. So this is why obviously um, I put the 7800 XT in there because it's a $499 MSRP card competing pretty damn close to a $599 MSRP card. So a hundred bucks could give you a whole nother tier of CPU if you needed it. It could pay for your case. You know, there's, there's the hundred bucks goes a long way. And then last but not least, we have Metro Exodus RT. Um, RT and Metro is um, ambient occlusion, I believe. Uh, when it comes to their RT. I could be wrong, but I know it's specifically about bounce lighting there. It, it's not about reflections or shadows. It's specifically about global illumination and all that. That's why they have the fire scene and all that. So anyway, as you can see right here, the 4070 Ti Tough is really close to the 4080. That's because engine caps, but you can see how much farther 1440 is away from 1080 versus the, 30, the 4080 there because of the engine there. Um, but check this out. The 4070, this is one of those titles that we had some wonkiness with where you can see the 4070 FE outperformed the 4070 Super across the board. And we tested this multiple times. It's just one of those things where um, sometimes on some titles, press drivers don't like a certain game, which is weird to me because it literally should be plugging in a prof game profile into a card architecture that already exists. But this happens every single time a new card launches from either of the brands. I guess all three now at this point. So this is one of those titles that was just weird. And we keep this information in to show you that sometimes buying a brand new card and playing a game that has existed for a while could sometimes lead to performance loss, depending on what you would expect. So this is one of those things that we would probably expect on the next like release driver to probably fix. There's a crap ton of titles uh, that, that are out there that the driver teams have to stay on top of. So this kind of stuff happens and it's important to let you know this kind of stuff can absolutely happen. So is the 4070 Super worth it? That's a weird question to ask considering the fact that it exists, it's going to exist, it's the same price as the card that it's replacing, which is the 4070 Ti, it's still expensive. So you gotta ask yourself this, if you are not looking for every single ounce of performance that you can in that price point, it might be worthwhile to consider a 7800 XT at $100 cheaper. However, if you are looking for a card that is capable of 4K gaming, can turn on ray tracing and titles and not tank your FPS all the way down to the teens unless you're playing Cyberpunk, and that and the RT we're using in Cyberpunk, that is not the fully path traced RT. That is the normal RT. So it would be even worse with path, tra path tracing. That should just be for like screenshots and stuff. But I mean, I have to at least give uh, Nvidia some credit here for the fact that this is the first time we've seen them in a while give you more performance in the same generation at the same price point. So they've done it in the past, like with the 3060, 3060 Ti, 4060, 4060 Ti, where they keep the price the same and there's more performance. Everyone kind of agrees a 60 model series card is too expensive at 400 bucks, right? And I think we honestly need to see $250 cards exist on both sides. We really, really do. We need to see more $250 competition there, but uh, it's a very powerful card at the same price point. I think the 4070 Ti Super though at $700 or $799, 800 bucks, that's a lot of freaking money for a, a 70 series tier card. And we'll talk more about that in that review. I like that it's all black. I like the fact that it is, uh, it, it's not going to more than likely melt your connector. 4070s and 4070 Ti's haven't really been melting connectors, so a Super shouldn't. It's not a very high power card. It's like 200 and, if I just had to look up the specs again, it's a 220 watt card. So it's a very powerful card at 220 watts. I can't answer whether or not it's worth it for you though. I think most people don't have $600 to spend on a graphics card. I really think, like I, I'm gonna go out on a limb here and I've already given Nvidia credit for the fact that they have reduced the price of like the 4070 down to 549 from 599, giving you a faster card at 599 and giving you a faster card again at 799. I really think the 4070, if they're gonna keep it around, should have dropped down to the 499 because that would have made the 7800 XT seem like a non-option at that point. And then make this card 549 and then make the 4070 Ti Super 699 and even $100 cheaper. But you know, that it is what it is. I don't know what it costs to manufacture these. They could be very expensive for all I know, but it is what it is. You as the consumer decide. So now that we've got 370 series tier cards coming, I'm curious, are you guys gonna be buying a 4070 Super? Are you gonna be buying a 3080 Ti maybe? Maybe that's a card we should have put on here to see how it compares to a higher tier previous gen card. Um, or are you still gonna wait? 
there you go guys 4070 super it's gonna be out now basically tomorrow by the time you guys see this so sound off in the comments i'm genuinely curious as to who is going to go out and buy this card thanks for watching we'll see you in the next one